coming back to the programs that you currently used and that you've had experience with, what is the reaction that you get when you bring a concept like a store walk, whether it's on paper or even a software solution from your team? What's the buy-in in from, from the corporate team in the store as well? I mean, one of the things that I hear when I'm talking to people about store walks is that don't the store staff hate that? I mean, they feel like they're your big brother looking over the shoulder and it's, it's kind of bearing down on them. How did you, you know, what were the challenges in putting in a program and still making it a positive program for the company? Well, everybody uh, loves change as long as it doesn't affect them, but, uh, you know, every program, uh, if, you're, if your staff, if you create a culture whereby your staff is genuinely concerned about the, you know, the win, the big win for the total team, they'll, they'll come around. And, and again, if you can justify it and legitimize it, uh, you know, to, to where it'll, it'll make sense, uh, we'll get buy-in. Uh, we, we haven't had a lot of problem with that, but um, there are people that are protect their turf more than others, you know. So, um, it's just create opportunities for us to uh, maybe further explain our, our goals. Yeah, there's a little bit of skepticism, I guess, at the support level on why we're making the change, but I think after we had that initial meeting, um, that pretty much all went away. Um, to Alan's point, uh, only what babies like change, so uh, it's one of those things that, um, then even at store level, we started getting questions back from the store level. Why is this produce guy in the bakery asking me questions? Um, so then we had to do further communication down to associate level on what exactly we were trying to accomplish. So I think after that understanding was there, it was pretty smooth. And just maybe one point to add is, um, you know, nobody likes it when you tell them what to do, but they all will typically come around if you're telling them why it's important and how to do it. One of the biggest challenges we've got right now is, like you said, a good question versus a bad question. When we're doing our show walks, getting, phrasing the question to be something that we actually get information off of. Uh, can, you walk, can you walk us through you know, what you're currently working on with your staff? It's been more of a struggle than I would have thought. Uh, just because, you know, these questions, it needs to be, you don't want people buried in their phone as they're walking the store and that's very dangerous. And what we what we had was that the directors put some questions in there and then they started to see the feedback that they were getting. And then they were kind of like junkies and they wanted more questions and more questions and pretty soon Delhi alone had 12 things listed out. And I was telling Andrew this yesterday that I got to a deli, I opened it up, I looked at it, I'm like, I'm not doing that. So because it would have taken me at least 40 minutes to get through their entire list. So we can't be asking our, our bakery people to spend an hour plus doing other things in the store. They still have their tasks that we want them to, to get done in the store. So they need to be fact-filled questions. So uh, the one up on the screen is, does produce have fresh cut samples out? And then there's a photo that you can expand out. If the deli person need, had a question on what we were talking about, it would then open up and show citrus cut hat wrapped on a tray. That's basically what we were looking for. Uh, citrus just came into season, so that's when we were pushing that. A poor question, in, in my opinion, is asking their, so the one that I opened up in Delhi was, uh, how are the service case associates? Are they friendly, engaging, and stuff? And it's like, there's four of them right now. There's another one coming. I can't see their name tags. How am I supposed to give you specific feedback on this? And then if I typed it all up, it would take me too long. Again, it's just a poor question. And what I've explained to my team is that that question, we expect our cart runners, our cashiers, our deli people, all of them to be friendly and engaging. So if you see it, fix it. It doesn't, that question doesn't need to be in an app. I don't want to really know that they weren't doing it, just take care of it. The other, the sample cut is something that would get missed by a store director. Uh, it can easily go, I could walk through a store and even though I'm the one that was pushing that, agenda, i miss it. If it's not on that reminder, I would definitely uh, miss some of those things. Uh, just last week I was talking to our deli director about uh, when I've been in stores recently, the sliced meats have not looked as good. Um, some stores are executing it awesome, and then we've got huge gaps, and when I was talking with the deli manager about that gap, I could see the look in her eye like, no, oh, mine mine's the best. I'm doing it right. I, you must be wrong. It's like, no, I, I get to like 
a lot of other stores every single week, and I get that's my leverage, I guess, over what you see. And so, what, in talking with how to use Task, and we're still learning some of it, um, I told him, let's put a question in there and just please take a photo of the sliced meats. And with our group being out there, we'll get at least probably 16 of our 19 stores in a single day, get all those pictures back, and we can then sort through the pictures, which ones are the best. And being able to have that tool to then show that deli manager when I'm having that conversation, this is why you fall at a four right now, even though you think that you're at a 10, you're not. This is what it's supposed to look like. Um, so those are you know, some of the examples uh, 